Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Christina Moyer and I'm a two-dimensional artist living in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I was born and raised most of my days. Except for the 10 years I lived in BC-ish. That was pretty great too. All right, today's video is kind of a segue video from our previous one, which was about varnishing. So this one is to get you the last step before you're gonna hang it up on your wall. So if you have been painting on these kind of gallery style wrapped canvases and you want to hang them, keep watching because I'm going to show you the tools you need and how to do the job. So you're ready like this to hang it on the wall. It's so much easier to hang with these than those two ones that are, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Put those on, but I, I like this. This is, this is the more professional way. We want to be professional. Okay. So what do you need? You need a ruler, pencil, picture hanging wire, D rings and screws wire cutters and pliers or one and the same and a screwdriver to match the screws that go into the d-rings so a lot of that stuff you can get just on amazon or at your hardware store or maybe you already have it first i'm going to mark which way is up on my painting so again my painting's already varnished it's dried completely you don't want to use a semi-wet one and i've marked an arrow going up so I know which side that I want to go down a third. So I'm make sure your ruler is long enough, by the way, that it can reach the whole painting so you know the whole length of the painting. Now this is the vertical length for where you're hanging. Okay, that showed really fast. That was 18 inches. It's 18 inches long. Divide that by three. So whatever length it is that the side that you're actually gonna put the hanging part on, divide that by three. So that was six, and then I mark six inches down or whatever unit of measurement that you're using. And that's where I'm going to put the screw with the D-ring on it. So I've got a little pack that I bought. I believe I got that on Amazon. And it's just a bunch of D-rings and screws that match. So I'm gonna grab two for this piece. Put them out, put out what you need. Grabbing the screws, get two of those. And of course the screw, make sure your screwdriver matches whatever style of screw that is. You can see the D-ring, I'm kind of showing that to you there. As the side that has the D goes towards the painting. So the rounded side is the in to the middle of the painting. That makes sense? And cause that's where you're gonna have the wire pulling you don't want it pulling on the opposite side. So make sure the D is facing inward. Okay, and I don't have a magnetic screwdriver, so I was having some issues getting it started, but that's okay. We got the job done. That's not where my skill set lies anyways. This is... <laughs> there we go. Get that in. Beautiful. It's almost in. Perfect. All right, let's get the other side in. There are other types of, I think there's an eye ring it's called. Um, you can use those as well. I like these because they lay flat against the wall a bit better. All right, getting that side in as well. A magnetic screwdriver would be better <laughs> to hold the screw in place. But you don't need anything fancy to get this job done. So the reason we have it a third of the way down is because the way the wire hangs, it stretches a little bit and you don't want the wire showing on the wall. So if you hang it too high, the wire will show. And then if you hang it a lot lower, if you went like halfway down, your painting might be hanging funny. So it'll kind of hang off the wall. So here's this wire that I have. I love that it has the picture of how to do it on the front. And this holds up to 25 pounds. And I don't think I have any paintings that will be 25 pounds. I don't even paint very heavily. So for me, that works. Make sure that you have the right weight for what you need. Now I'm going to measure across the length, not just to the D-rings, but past it because we have to tie it in. So you need a little extra. So use the wire cut cutters. 
get that aside. Okay, I'm gonna use the diagram because it's been a while since I've done one, and so let's get you a bit of a better view also. So I'm holding that little D-ring part, going down into it, and then when you come around, you come around over, and then loop it back under this time, through, and then thread it through what you went around through. Hopefully that makes sense, but you can watch this again if you're not sure. And I'm gonna do a couple more. So push that really tight, using my thumb, using my fingers, pulling it tight, making sure it's not a loose knot at the, the top there. And then I'm gonna wrap tightly the little end part right around the one that's gonna go across, the wire that's going across. I think this wire I also got on Amazon as well. But again, you can get this wire all kinds of places, hardware stores. Go to the picture hanging section. Sometimes you might even just have some wire. If you just need to do one, you're not gonna be doing a whole bunch, then you can just get one of those picture hanging kits that has all kinds of gadgets in there. And then you can use pliers to kind of pinch it, pinch that little end piece, especially if you have a wire that's just steel. Um, this one has a bit of a coating on it, so it's a bit softer on the ends. But if you have a steel one, you don't want that part, you don't want anyone to, to touch that and to hurt themselves, so make sure you kind of crimp that end. So again, going over and in, so kind of up and through around and back into that one that wraps around it. <laughs> I'm better at showing than explaining, but you can't see this side as well. I apologize for that. The other side had a better view of how I did it, but you can also just follow the, the guide, the picture guide on the wire if you got one that had that. So you can see it has a little bit of movement there, flexibility, and that's okay. And I made it a bit too long, but it's better to be a bit too long than too short. So cut that. Make sure it's nice and taut, as taut as you can make. I don't try to make it loose when I'm first pulling. Make it as tight as you can, and then, and then it will kind of sag a little bit afterwards, depending on the type you got anyways mine. I think it has some kind of plasticky coating on it. Kind of makes it a little bit like that. But once you have it held up, it actually is just fine. I have large paintings, small paintings that I've used this with, and it's just fine. So now I'm clearing the table a bit because I'm going to be working on a larger piece. So this is the piece that I've varnished. Both of these ones I varnished the last video. So we're just getting the space ready. So you can see it, that's the one with the glossy finish. So pretty, clear gloss finish. Okay, so again, first mark which side is up because you don't wanna put the wire on the wrong side and waste your <laughs> tools. So make sure you know which side is up. And I apologize, the trying to get the view so you can see exactly what I'm doing was a bit of a challenge. This one's a 36 by 48 painting, so it's on the larger scale. And so again, you don't actually need a ruler. I did say you need the ruler for the whole length. You do need to know how long the canvas is. So if you need to measure that first, um, just use a measuring tape. And then what you do need to mark down is a third of the way down. So 48 divided by three is 16. So 16 inches down, I made a mark and I'm grabbing my tools now to do the same process again. So you can watch this process again and I will bring it closer once we get to actually putting it in because it's a little bit hard to see, but this part's pretty self-explanatory. You're just putting a screw in the D-ring on that third of the way down. This again is not the part where I'm the most talented. <laughs> Hold it in place, get it in there. And what I like about this method of having the the wire, and I believe this is just what they expect um, more professionally. I'm not exactly sure why that is. 
um, over the the little teeth um, hanging at, from the top. I think maybe this is more secure. Um, maybe it holds a bit stronger. Okay, here we go. We got a little bit of a closer view. Maybe you can see me place that in. You see where I made the mark? I don't actually have to put it right. Like I just find the center part where the where it sits nicely on the wood right in the middle. Oh, see? <laughs> because I don't have the magnet. Magnetic screwdriver. <laughs> oh man. This is a little embarrassing. That's okay. I'm willing to be to embarrass myself, to be vulnerable. Yeah, so I, I think I do like one thing about having the wire versus the little teeth is it's a bit easier to get it right because when you are hanging it, it is a little challenging to actually get the wire onto the little hook on the wall. But once you get it on there, it's pretty easy if you get, if it's twisting, you know, a little off centered or to the side, you, you don't really have to, you don't have to redo anything. You just kind of have to shift your painting a little bit. So that makes it a bit of a simpler process. Okay, so again, we're going, did you see how it went down and through and around? Now, if you go around, you come up through the hole. And then don't pull tight till you've gone back through what, what, what wrapped around, kind of like a tie. And it looks kind of like a pretzel to me. So <laughs> if you know how to make a pretzel, maybe it's similar, I'm not sure. Maybe you can let me know. <laughs> maybe you have more experience than I do with this. Okay, so again, after that, it's to give it even more security, we do that little wrap around, but it, maybe on this one, I wait till I do the other side. So I can get the other side done. And that is actually not a terrible idea either. So see how I push it down through. Oh, good. See, I threaded it down through and over. So over the, and then after you go over, you come back up through the hole. Then what wrap let that wrapped around and start sorry I'm not showing it that well right there, but you gotta keep the the wire that's going across taut, as taut as you can, when you're doing all of this. And then you thread it through that hole that went across and then pull it tight. Tight as you can, because that is going to you know sag a little bit. So now I'm doing that nice tight wrap around with my end piece after I've created the knot. And you just don't want the wire hanging around, you know? You know, you know? Especially if you're using a wire that is sharp at the end, like most wires are. But this one seems to be a bit softer than other ones that I've used before. So I'm not as worried about it cutting somebody. And if you do have a sharp one, this you can use pliers to wrap this around as well if you have delicate fingers. But this one for me is just fine to use my fingers. Okay, look! It's ready to be hung! Hooray! It's always a good feeling when you're finished and it's ready. Yay, that's it! And so remember that we do it at a third because you don't want the wire to hang above the painting and it gives it the right amount of support, just the right level. So it's a third down. Thank you for watching. I hope you found some of this useful for your hanging art hanging needs. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more of this wonderful action. Thank you. Until next time, have a wonderful day.